When talking, a reoccurring theme when talking about doing business differently with other transactions is the importance of the team. Who are the critical players and what qualities are essential? We actually have a, uh, a slide uh, that illustrates who might be a participant on the team. Pretty much the people that you would expect. The issue here is bringing together the right kind of expertise and having the right kind of relationship among the parties. I mean, I'm, I'm a lawyer. And in DOD, a lot of lawyers conceive of themselves as gatekeepers. They have a yes or no function uh, on things. In, a, in an OT team, the, the lawyer, for example, is, is not a gatekeeper, is not a yes-no um, voice, but is rather a key player in helping to strategize and, and find the uh, path through the various legal authorities that allow, allow the goal of uh, the project to be accomplished uh, in a legal and business uh, uh, savvy way. The other players likewise have a simil similar role and they need to play off their particular strengths and weaknesses. In the Federal Acquisition Regulation FAR system, the contracting officer is said to be the only person that can obligate the government. Well, under the FAR system, the contracting officer's first duty is to assure compliance with all the laws, regulations, and executive orders. And what, once that is accomplished, they are allowed to use business judgment uh, in putting a contract together. Well, not so in OTs. First of all, most of the laws and regulations that apply to the FAR system don't apply to OTs at all. So the skill set that the contracting officer uh, brings to their normal procurement job uh, doesn't apply in the OT setting. So a, a contracting officer that actually has a business background in the commercial sector would be much more valuable to an OT team than one that was deeply schooled in the FAR system, for example. The, the program manager, he's the per person that, that needs to have the clearest vision of what the goal of the program is and needs to be able to share that with other members of the team so that the team can then jointly figure out what is the strategy, you know, he, here we are at this point, we know where we want to get ultimately, and ultimately it is fielded capability that enhances um, the ability of our, our forces to deal with the threats that, that are, um, they confront. So there are steps in between, and by combining the brain power of all of these team members, and uh, we formulate a clear statement of the problem, and we begin to see what the solution sets are that we have to choose from. And once the, the government sort of gets a handle uh, on this, what's the problem we're trying to solve? What are some of the potential solutions? Then the government team has an opportunity to interact with industry and, and take the uh, inputs of industry and in essence make them part of the team or uh, ha have inputs into the, into the team solution. So it's, it's a whole different way of looking at things. You know, uh, it, it's not a separate requirements development process. It, it's not just what does S&T do? How does that inform us? Uh, science and technology may be key to any given project. On the other hand, the business appro approach may be more important than the state of, uh, of the technology. The technology that's going to be deployed might be relatively mature. And what's really needed is developing new relationships among parties to bring to bear the resources that will drive the technology to capability uh, in, in a relatively short period of time with uh, the, the best uh, application uh, of resources that are available. And, and the thinking may be that, well, in this particular project, uh, a single performer makes sense, or it may be that we need to bring together a multiplicity of performers who have different talents in order to, to drive this project uh, to success. So it's, it's getting team members that are prepared to uh, think in a strategic way, to apply critical thinking to, uh, to a problem, 
and not be wedded to a stovepipe or swim lane view of the world where the, the financial management expert uh, may have key insights into business processes that can contribute to the way the project is done. The, um, the lawyer uh, may take a key role in understanding and articulating the common goal of the parties and putting that into writing in a vision statement for the agreement that sets the stage for then negotiating terms and conditions. And the lawyer and the contracting uh, spe specialist uh, may collaborate on putting together the government's view of what the terms and conditions ought to be, taking into consideration uh, the private sector's uh, view of their needs and their goals, which need, of course, to be congruent with the government's goals. So the, the whole team process is one of, uh, of collaboration, for discovering you know, what the mutual goals are, what win-win solu solutions are available. It, it, it's not a FAR type process where 95% of the contract document is written before you ever start negotiating or thinking about what key terms and conditions uh, you might have. So the talents and functions of, of the team are, are really qu quite different in the OT process compared to a normal FAR uh, traditional contracting process and therefore the team needs to uh, approach uh, their task in, in, a, in a different manner. We hear <clears throat> that there are also a lot of challenges in assembling an OT team. Can you touch base on some of these challenges or some of the that you have been uh, acquainted with over the years? First of all, what, I, what I've just said about the skills that are necessary and the roles that are played is countercultural, and people are comfortable in in their stovepipes, in their swim lanes, in, in dealing with limited issues that that they think they own, as opposed to having a, a collective view of things, pooling knowledge, uh, taking advantage of someone's uh, education and background, even though it's not his specialty uh, in his government role, but rather he can be a contributor to the team. The other, the other issue that comes up is um, people involved in government contracting uh, are often uh, harried. They're, they often have uh, workloads that they need to deal with, and this open collaborative approach you know, may take more time mm -hmm. than just looking something up or you know, uh, opening up a catalog. Uh, so there, there is an issue. and. There's a reticence on the part of, of folks to reach out to industry and to draw in industry's knowledge and, mm -hmm. and expertise to have these open lines of communication because in the, in the FAR system, we have uh, blackouts where we don't talk to industry. We, you know, when this event happens, we, we shut down, we close down. Uh, but we need to be open to, to bringing in information, bring, consolidating uh, information to help us with our strategy and planning throughout the whole process. I mean, it, it's best to assemble this team uh, early, and it's all also necessary if there are people who can't operate in that kind of collaborative environment and think that they're only there to represent their stovepipe uh, organization. Well, they can't be a positive player, and we need to identify those, those folks and say, you know, there's probably a lot of things that you can do well but participating in this team process is not necessarily one of them. And uh, thank you for your, your effort, but we don't need your, your help anymore. So it's a very dynamic uh, process and, uh, and different than business as usual. If you are putting together an OT team or having some challenges, please feel free to contact strategicinstitute.org.